I'm Justin Young. I'm a product manager at Sonatype, uh, focused on integrations. So that's uh, client tooling, um, stuff like the Jenkins plugin. Um, and at Sonatype, we work on open source software, really the supply chain of how open source gets into your software and what that means and what the implications are. So I know everyone here uses open source because we're at a Jenkins conference. Um, how many people build software with open source? Awesome. How many people contribute to open source? Awesome. Yeah, I love open source software. I've been in the business for seven years-ish, um, and I've been contributing ever since. I almost didn't get this presentation done because I was building a uh, open source music workstation on top of Sam Aaron's uh, Sonic Pi. So it's addictive. It's fun to contribute. Um, and open source, obviously, is making the world go round. Um, it turns out that we're in a you know, technological revolution. Software is eating the world. It's doing it on the back of open source software. This is the Sonatype 2019 State of the Software Supply Chain Report. And you can see here that over 3.5 million Java components are out there and being utilized by software developers. You have almost half as much on NuGet and PyP and NPM as well. So there's a lot of open source software out there, and it's being used. Now, open source is a bit peculiar um, as opposed to closed source, as companies tend to aggregate or to group around different implementations of open source that become popular. Because of its nature, people can start to um, look at the source code, look at the commits, and do deep dive research into what the open source software is. There are black hat and white hat researchers out there who then start to look for security vulnerabilities and how to, um, how to attack them. Because it's open source, it's a dip, bit different of a problem because the security researchers know exactly what versions are affected and can start to target systems that use that software. Now, I don't want to be disparate against uh, open source. Uh, security violations are just a bug, and everyone makes bugs. It's actually incredible how quickly they get fixed by open source projects. But they're still out there, and they're still a problem. So um, it's promised in the, I think, the description of this lightning talk that I'm going to do a demo. It's going to be very brief. Um, but here's an example of what can happen. Uh, we like to beat up on Struts 2 here. I think I'm not the only vendor who promised this demo. But one of the reasons why we mentioned Struts 2 is because it's, it's a very popular library and it's still being used. We know years later that there's a, via, a security vulnerability in the software, and it's still being utilized by companies. What happens is scripts like this get posted on the, uh, on the web, and they get weaponized. And it becomes very easy to exploit. So right here, we have a hacker script warehouse. Uh, it's providing that script out there. And this is just a header that I can pass over to my server. So luckily, I'm offline here. I'm running a, um, a version of Struts 2 on my computer that is vulnerable to a security vulnerability. I just took that header, do a get against it, and I open my calculator. That was a web request to my server that had access to the system that could open my calculator. Now, to me, my calculator is a very important asset, maybe not to everyone here, but think about what other assets are on servers. If they're running Stress 2, you'd want to know that they're running Stress 2 and what they meant. This is even compounded by the fact that a lot of people take Struts, pack into Tomcat, and run it at root. So it's not just access to um, assets that your user can run. Every little thing on your computer can be used by um, attackers on Struts. Oh, goodness, how am I going to get back? All right. So there's a lot of steps that you can do, and there's a few easy steps that I'd recommend everyone to do here. First, pay attention to those GitHub security alerts. GitHub has done a good job of making that visible to everyone. Um, there's a lot of vendors, uh, Sonatype included, that have free tooling in the GitHub marketplace. Sonatype Depth Shield will open issues in your GitHub project for any vulnerabilities that we know about and provide remediation information to you so you can start to fix them, start to move to versions that don't have them or switch frameworks. These are very simple to get done. It's a single click on GitHub. I encourage everyone to do it. But we're at a Jenkins uh, conference, so let's talk Jenkins for a second. What's nice about CI is you can start to do some enforcement around it. So pipelines allow you to run any kind of script or logic. There's a lot of free tools out there that do this kind of thing for you. Uh, security vulnerability analysis. Nancy, uh, that gopher down there is Nancy 
Drew, or maybe just Nancy. Um, she's a command line tool that will analyze your Go projects for security vulnerabilities. I can hand build a, um, a Jenkins pipeline script here that will run that CLI and provide the data back to me. And just to show you what that ends up looking like, I can actually break my build. I have a Go mod application here that ends up having security vulnerabilities in it. Not only do I break my build, but I get some data back about it. So here I have 125 dependencies, of which three are vulnerable. And Nancy gives me some extra good details here. I was going to spend some time and throw this in a table and show what you can do with it. The takeaway, because <laughs> I didn't do it, is it's hard. It's a lot of work to start to do that. So this works great for my projects, but how do I start to do that at scale? Now, very quickly, that's, that's Go. There are other tools out there. Um, these are Sonatype provided, but you can look at, you know, at any vendor. But these are OSS index tools that will allow you to do similar things in different ecosystems. Audit.js for JavaScript, .NET for .NET. Dependency Track even has their own Jenkins plugin. So you don't have to do a lot of heavy work I was talking about. So how do I do that at scale? If I break a build for myself, I can go in my log. If my uh, Sonic Pi music workstation is broken, I'll go through the logs. I'll figure what's wrong. I'll fix it. It's not too much work. But if I do that over an uh, um, organization with 1,000 developers, it starts to become a real tax on my organization. So enforcement is going to be important, but how do we make that work for us? A big thing is context. We want to make sure that your applications that are web apps in front of banking services, yeah, you're going to want to break those if there's security vulnerabilities in them. If I am building my Sonic Pi web app, I probably don't want to break that. Warn me. Tell me about it. This is all running air-gapped or offline. It's running on a, Sonic, on a Raspberry Pi, actually. I'm not too concerned. There's other contexts that you have to worry about, like um, uh, if, if it's in a development environment, if it's in production. Am I a developer who did a feature branch who wants to um, make some more software? As a developer who opens a feature branch, I'm going to want access to all the components out there, all the libraries. And even if they are security vulnerable, just tell me about it. Don't break my build. A good example of this is, let's say there's a zero day in your software in production, and you want to fix it. Do you want your Jenkins breaking so that uh, every time you try to make an iterative fix on this particular piece of software? No. You want to know that there's a problem. You want to fix it, and then push it to master. So context is very important. Once you start breaking builds, precision becomes very important, too. So we talked about the couple minutes, maybe half an hour I would need to um, fix and remediate a vulnerability in my, my own software. Well, compound that over you know, a portfolio of 1,000 applications. That becomes untenable as a business to, um, to spend money on. So we need precision. What does that mean? That means no false positives. Um, now Secure uh, sponsored the, the, what was it, Re opening reception, and they had the stickers, false positives suck. It's true. False positives suck. You want to have software, you want to have vendors who supply stuff with no false positives or as little as possible. There's lots of cultures where the engineers have, uh, are empowered, and once uh, engineers start to see false positives, they will rebel and turn the tooling off. We want to make sure that the tooling is successful. Speaking about tooling, I put uh, tooling on the important things. It may be because I'm a you know, tooling product manager. But having the tools to make the fixes is highly important. The Jenkins plugin to be able to break the builds or whatever you would like to do with the information is definitely important. But having data in the IDEs and suggestive remediation, being able to integrate with SIMS and, and vulnerability management systems, and ticketing, all these are useful things that we have come about to develop software quickly. We need to make sure that we do the same and integrate into the same tools for security vulnerabilities. Lastly, you need a champion. Um, over all the organizations that we deploy to, the key to every success is having a champion, someone who cares about this as much as I do, or if not more. As well as we can de develop software, as good as we can deploy it, without having a team who wants to push that through an enterprise, it's just not going to be successful. So finding the right, t uh, the right person at your organization or the right team, maybe even you, who cares about this deeply, is going to be critical to the success. 
And that's about it. There's two things I talked about today, um, OSS index and the state of the software supply chain that I urge everyone to check out. Um, these are both Sonotype assets. OSS index is a, a vulnerability database that we maintain and is uh, constantly updated, and there's tooling and a whole ecosystem bit uh, based around it. The next, uh, some of these pretty graphs are from the state of the software supply chain. It's an amazing read about what open source means right now to companies and, and to the whole ecosystem. I'd urge everyone to check it out. So that's about it. I have about five minutes. So the last thing I'd like to say is uh, we at Sonotype are building uh, new build reports and dashboards for Jenkins for this particular purpose. Uh, as a product manager, if anybody is interested in what that looks like or would like to provide feedback, I would love to hear it. What kind of data do you want in Jenkins as a software engineer, as an operator, any of those things that can help me build a better dashboard? So stop by the booth and say hi and um, let me know. Thank you.